This final video is brought to us by the Viking Archer. Uh, loving this one. Okay, so <clears throat> this is a common place where you have simple interest showing up, and that is uh, also, as our author points out, the most dangerous, the short-term payday loans, um, also known as cash advances, um, uh, which is, uh, as the author also points out, very different than a cash advance on a credit card. So we're gonna start with, hey, you're getting paid in 10 days, you need some cash, uh, you're desperate. Maybe it's a car repair so you can get to work, maybe your rent is due and you're gonna get um, kicked out or something of that nature. And so you go to a payday lender and they lend you 350 now and you'll be asked to pay them back when your paycheck comes. There's always gonna be some fee with that. Uh, the median fee, this, we're going to learn about this in unit four if you don't know what median is. It's the middle fee. If we arranged all the fees that are charged by these different payday lenders from smallest to largest, it's the middle one. Charged by these types of lenders is $115 per every $100 borrowed. So if we think about how much we're going to have to pay back, uh, we could see that there are two full $100, right? So uh, that would be two times 15 so 30 bucks on that and then a half of a 100 dollars um boy i am messing this up big time so we have three 100s right that's because three times 100 equals 300 so that's three 15 dollars for the fee there for 45 and then the 50 dollars is one half of 100 so the fee there is half of the fifteen dollars on the, on the fifty. So one half of fifteen is seven fifty. So our total fee uh, for the ten days is the forty five plus the seven fifty. That's going to give us what does that feel like fifty two fifty. So we are going to owe fifty two dollars and fifty cents in 10 days. So what percent interest is that? Well, remember, uh, as we said in a prior video, percent is the part divided by the whole. So our part here is the 5250. That's the part and the whole that we're being charged on is the 350. So what percent of 350 is that? So let's scamper over to Desmos and find that out. Uh, we're going to do 52.50 divided by 350. Whoa, I got, I got crazy real fast, didn't I? Divided by 350, uh, that's looking like um, 0 0.15 or 15% if I multiply by 100. Um, however, that's charged 15% over a 10-day period. So it doesn't sound like the author is pointing out, it doesn't sound crazy long, but it's for a 10 day period. So what would that turn out to be in a yearly period? Like what's the APR, the yearly interest rate? Um, so what do we have to multiply 10 by to turn it into 365? In other words, um, how many, what, what, what is this as a yearly interest rate? So one way we could figure this out is say 10 times what equals 365 well that 10 is going to be 36.5 so there's 36.5 multiples of that uh, in a year which means what we need to do is take our 0 0.15 interest rate and multiply it by 36.5 and this will get our yearly interest rate our annual interest rate Let's scamper over to Desmos and do that. Hmm. So that equals 5.475. That's the decimal version of it. If we multiply that times 100, we end up with the annual interest rate that we're being charged. 547.5% interest. Now, that that is crazy high, right? This is per one year. This was up here, this was per 10 days, right? So that's our difference between these two. Um, 
terrible interest rate. And the reality is if like, I guess it's not too terrible. If we were able to pay it back in our, um, in those 10 days and it got us out of the bind we were in, and these were the only people that would lend to us, it's okay because it was only 5250. But if we end up taking a full year to pay it, we're going to pay 5250 times 3650. There's also going to be a ton of other fees thrown on top of that. Um, it ends up being insane interest rates. All right, we've got another example on the backside of simple interest. Um, and that is that sometimes, oftentimes, certificates of deposits or CDs, um, these are often fixed rates. So this is an investment as opposed to a, a loan where you're, you're losing tons of money. Um, so here we're, we're looking at how much more interest would you earn if you chose Live Oak Bank versus Sally May. So we're looking at 250 um, invested for one year or our interest rate here is 0 0.0285. We're just gonna multiply by one here. Um, that's Live Oak and then the Sally May Bank is 0 0.0275 for one year. We'll scamper over to Desmos. We can do both of those pretty quickly. We're getting 71.25 on that one. Oops, I wrote this one down wrong. And I also wrote this one down wrong. So there's our amounts. And then the difference between those two is the extra we earn by going to the live oak. So an extra $2.50, not a big deal. Now, one of the keys with these is you do have to leave these in the bank for that amount of time. Okay, so this next one is, is a good question because it requires us to calculate an interest rate. It's saying here, if we wanted to earn $80 in a one year time frame on our $2,500 investment rate or in principle, what interest rate would we want? In other words, we're looking for an R um, where our P is 2,500 and our T is one and our I is $80. So it's like an example problem we already did. Recall that R is equal to the interest divided by the principal times the time. Again, we'll scamper over to Desmos. Pretty basic uh, type in. And we're looking at 0 0.032. These days, uh, interest rates are pretty high so we would probably be able to get this. In fact, I think I've seen interest rates up in the five percentage range. So um, then we're told, hey, what if you take the interest rate the Synchrony Bank is offering? Note that that interest rate is 2.8% uh, per one year. So 0 0.028 as a decimal. Um, how long would we need to invest it in order to get $80? Okay, so we're wanting this to come out to 80. We're putting in the same amount, 2,500. What's our time gonna be? So T is equal to the 80, and then it's divided by the principal times the rate. Again, scamper over to Desmos. 80 divided by 2,500 times 0.028. Uh, looks like we'd need 1.14 years. And I suppose what we should do is take that 1.142857 and multiply by 12. And you can see we need approximately 14 months is what that's coming out to be. Um, and we'd have to determine, is that really practically possible? Like if these are a fixed... Uh, length of time CDs and you can only um, cash them in after one year, then we might not be able to do that. If, if you're uh, like, you're not able to cash them in a month after a month's time. Okay. So then our author's like, Hey, look, CDs don't return a ton on interest, but they do offer a guaranteed return. So let's suppose you also do uh, 
a business venture, we get a 12.5% return in one year unless the company failed to return a profit. And then you get nothing back. So what's the amount of interest you'd get? And then let's decide if, is it worth that risk? Well, if it's simple interest, this is the amount of money we could potentially get. It's obviously gonna be way more. 212 dollars and what we would need to know is like how likely are we to get that return and how likely are we to how likely is there to be no profit and then we lose all 2500 dollars so <laughs> it's that's a pretty um that's a pretty risky sort of um business venture. I don't know if I would be interested in taking that. I would definitely need a lot more uh, 